Over the past few months, Lawrence, we've been speaking to academics, experts, Do Kwan himself, the creator of Terra Luna, to challenge whether algorithmic stablecoins like UST could fall apart. We ask the hard questions so that you can be informed and time and time again, the warnings were clear and we have this retrospective. What do you say to those who, who uh, argue that algorithmic stable coins are actually the most unstable type of uh, stable coins there is and that they shouldn't even be called stable coins? I think that type of stereotype is a perfect recipe to get uh, wrecked. And what I like to say is that silence is a perfectly good option if stupid. If a major crisis came along, could that, that could potentially destabilize those assumptions. That, does that make Terra Luna vulnerable? Well, I mean, the same argument could apply to any currency regime. So for the same reason, would you deprive developing countries of the ability to have, you know, sovereign monetary policy? And I think the answer is no. There's just nothing new here. I mean, you've got, you know, another founder, uh, yet again, sort of jurisdiction hopping and under investigation by the SEC and using lawyers to dodge those inquiries and claiming that it doesn't matter. And that out of all the stable coins out there in existence right now, which ones give you the most cause for concern. I think algorithmic stable coins are particularly vulnerable because of their design. For a lot of algorithmic stable coins like Iron Finance, uh, you know, Basis Cash, ESD, DSD, uh, the main problem wasn't that they had an on-chain programmatic uh, monetary policy. The problem was that the incentives that they were giving to get people to hold the algorithmic stable coins was not sustainable. This is essentially a Ponzi scheme whereby if you hold one unit of our algorithmic stablecoin, we're going to give you more than 10x the amount of algorithmic stablecoins over the year. What would trigger a run on an algorithmic stablecoin? I know Terra Luna is different in terms of its ecosystem play, but the, still, the, the basic vulnerability is still there. You have concentration risk in holders of the balancer or investment token. Because of that concentration risk, there's the potential for individuals or groups acting in consortium to move markets in significant ways. If I'm reliant on the perpetual stability of the Terra ecosystem for my money to be stable, it's not likely I'm going to use that. Well, let's step back for a second here, because I, I think maybe explain to the viewers um, the role of UST currently and, and why they're purchasing all this Bitcoin um, for their books and, and really what, what is the, you know, is it a Ponzi scheme? That the reserves were not something that, that were originally in, in the ecosystem design. The reserves is something that have come after. I look at this and I think the fact that Terra is adding to this reserves or acknowledging the need to reserves suggests to me that they don't think the ecosystem in and of itself is sufficient to, to be able to keep this peg, which is not what the uh, original design was. This is something that's come after. The Luna Foundation Guard, and so this, this is this group of Do Kwan and three or four other insiders that control the keys for a few billion dollars, and they've been buying Bitcoin with it uh, sensibly to shore up uh, UST, their, uh, their pretend stable coin. <laughs> they saw this coming, and by design, yeah. they're supposed to mint Luna to stabilize the peg, but now they're not doing that, so does their initial model just not work? Their initial model doesn't work because it causes a death spiral. There, There is hype, but I would also add that there are, I would venture to say, an increasing number of doubters on whether particularly the anchor protocol is sustainable. It's all reliant on one uh, fake unsustainable uh, protocol that's giving 20% interest uh, for free, kind of like free Uber rides or, or free deliveries of, uh, you know, 50% off uh, Grubhub when they enter your market or something like that. It's unsustainable. They'll run out of money in the next couple of months. How would a collapse of this specific, you know, stable coin potentially lead to some sort of systemic risk? Could the utilization of the Bitcoin reserve transmit volatility across the crypto ecosystem? It would seem obvious that it could. You know, we had Do Kwan on here a, a few months ago. He said, well, the economics of Luna are much different than what you saw with uh, Titan and, and Iron uh, back a few months ago, which famously imploded. Is that really the case or is that just sort of something that, you know, he's just making up? 
Yeah, I mean, the mechanism is basically exactly the same as the other ones. That mechanism works because they're paying to pump up the price of Luna while they exit their position. So the longer they can keep this thing going, the more Luna they can sell. That's real Bitcoin that they bought. If they can get out of this holding billions of dollars of Bitcoin at the end of the day, if they can, you know, just continue to sell Luna into the open market and buy real estate in Manhattan, Long Island or whatever it is they do with their money, like the longer they can keep this thing going, uh, the more money they make. So there's a lot of incentives for the OTC desks and and the Luna team to kind of work together to keep the game going. It was observed that the whole thing was fractional. It's kind of like a fractional reserve central bank. Um, and so people have been warning that this, you know, this this peg could come undone if it's fractional. Everybody can see where the liquidations level are, and you know, selling into the market will push down the collateral, particularly the Luna token, which has you know a very narrow pool of buyers and value only associated with this stablecoin. Check yourself before you get on board with supposedly bullish narratives. I think it's really important to have a critical eye and not cheerlead things just because somebody says they like Bitcoin and you know the, the narrative seems mildly bullish. I think this is probably the, the worst false narrative that we've seen in the Bitcoin space since the, uh, the fake S2F models, which are obviously <laughs> really embarrassing for Bitcoiners to try to be pushing to that to anybody that understood stats and math and finance. Um, we kind of got laughed out of the room with uh, with the S2F models. And I think something like this is, you know, equally just getting egg on the face of Bitcoiners that have been uh, cheering on a, a total Ponzi scheme and a scammer. Do you yeah. eventually see algorithmic stablecoins like Terra surpassing the market cap of, say, Tether and the use of Tether? It's close to 10 billion now, so it only has to 7x, right? And what is and your outlook for 2022? Year, so. I think we'll get there. Oh, Lawrence, thank goodness they didn't get any bigger. I mean, I, I just remember seeing how they were gaining in market cap and thinking, oh my gosh, if this explodes like, uh, you know, the academics and experts yeah. say that it will, it's going to cause a lot of losses for just ordinary folks. So well, what are some lessons learned? Well, it did cause a lot of losses. It did mm -hmm. cut a lot of losses for ordinary folks. A lot of people did lose their money. A lot of people did lose their life savings. A lot of people did things after, as a result of it, of losing so much that are horrible that will affect their families for decades and generations. This is ultimately, you know, when we had that interview with Bill Kwan and, and he's been out there repeatedly all over the place, incredible amounts of arrogance incredible amounts of arrogance and people should actually be angry at him because what he did was he shouted down anybody who had legitimate questions he humiliated them on social media he attacked them he sent people out after them on social media and also you had all these bots you know we talked earlier about elon musk wanting to uh, curb the bots and being concerned about buying twitter because of them this is real those bots convinced a lot of people to go out there and, and subscribe to this idea that was ultimately a scam. And we have, to be, we have to be vigilant as journalists to constantly ask those questions and not take any nonsense, and I'm, I'm holding back on the real word that I want to use, from people who are, you know, they act so arrogantly about about their models and they refuse to uh, refuse to answer real questions and they use personal and, attacks afterwards this is enough right people should well, wake this... up in the crypto market and say stop it already take us we're gonna if this is going to be a real market if this is going to be a real industry if this is really going to be a revolution take it seriously I'm well, sorry. That this was is just... certainly no. I, I totally understand, Lawrence. I mean, when we interviewed Do Kwan, asking legitimate questions, I, I was shocked at the response, and then later on, the ad hominem attacks over social media because these are legitimate questions, and you would expect, you know, someone who is seriously, uh, you know, going through these problems would come up with a serious answer, and what we got was just uh, puerile hubris and just dismissive uh uh and these you know, unfortunate comments these unfortunate these unfortunate people that put all their money by you know look people and for sadly you know we talk about doing your own research and things like that unfortunately a lot of people don't have the skill set to do their own research they're not 
they're not academics, they're not Especially analysts. when there's so much misinformation out there. Yeah, robots, they're bots. They're literally bots going out on Twitter, confusing people. And they don't, they don't understand the, the, the technology behind what they're looking at. That doesn't necessarily, or, or the yeah. economics. Well, this I is, think this the lesson is like, here certainly is to view things with a critical eye. And if everyone is on this hopium tide and, you know, cheering, rah, 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 something that seems too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true.